What's he doing up there? Hey, Jimmy! Hang on a minute. I can't see. It's foggy. Gone cold, too. What did you say? I tell you it's foggy. Cloud or something. Hey, wait a minute. There's someone coming. Who is it, Jim? The abominable snowman? I tell you there's someone coming. I can't see a thing. Who is it? Who is it? No, no! Jim! Help! Help! Right, take strength. Holy quick. Stand by. Now, together. Help! Oh. Can you see him? Not yet, he's just below the lip. Here he is. Jim! No! Come on, come on! You idiot, we nearly had him. Why did you let him go? Didn't you see What him? are you talking about? His head! It was torn off! Talking in your sleep. I give away any secrets? Not really. I didn't quite catch his last name. Silly. <laughs> Would you like some tea? Oh, thank you. You sure you feel all right? Yeah, I feel wonderful. I wish everybody would stop treating me like an invalid. I'm sorry. Look, Anne, there are the mountains. Don't worry, it's all right. Is there anything I can do? Oh, uh, my name is Alan Brooks. Oh, well, I'm Anne Pilgrim, and this is my sister, Sarah. Hello. How do you do? Uh, there we are. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about your newspaper, Mr. Brooks. Oh, that's all right. I've read the baseball scores. There you are. It's part of that will bring the color back. Yeah. You look like you might do with one. No, thanks. You have far to go? Geneva. It's quite a run. Trollenberg. Next, Trollenberg. 
Trollenberg. Sarah, we're getting off at Trollenberg. That's my stop. What's the matter, and You know we have to go on to Jimmy. No, I really can't go any further today. We can stop at the Hotel Europa. Hotel Europa? We've never been to this place. How do you know about the Hotel Europa? I don't know. Anne, what's got into you? We're getting off at Trollenberg. Please, Sarah. Oh, Herr Brooks, I'm sorry I'm late. Did you have a nice trip, Herr Brooks? Herr Klein, nice to see you again. Oh, I'd like for you to meet uh, Miss Anne and Sarah Pilgrim, Herr Hello, Klein. Did. He's a proprietor of the Hotel nice. Europa. I wonder if maybe you could help us out. These uh, young ladies have arrived without any reservations. Thought perhaps you could put them up. Yes, sir. Yes, it will be all right. Good. Thank you very much. But the car's outside. It's very good of you to put us up at such short notice. Well, uh, this is not yet our season, you understand? Oh, I thought now would have been about your busiest time. Well, normally, yes, sir, but... Uh... Oh, is... Is, uh, is Hans still working for you? Yes, uh, Hans is still working for us, Thank good. you. Cigarette, sir? No, thank you. Anne? Hmm? No, thank you. How about you, Herr Klein? Thank you, I don't smoke. They shouldn't have started the climb. What are you talking about? An accident. Last week, 1,200 feet up the South Col. Three English students, one of them was killed. Was there an accident, Mr. Klein? On a mountain? Uh, these things sometimes happen. What else do you know about the Trollenberg? Peasants are leaving the mountain. They say it's bad luck. The mountain people are very simple. They are superstitious. All these stories are nonsense. What stories? Climbers disappearing into the mist and never seen again. Mr. Brooks. Klein told us you were coming. My name's Truscott, Philip Truscott. How are you, Mr. Truscott? Klein, you didn't tell us we were expecting other guests. Oh, this is Miss Sarah Pilgrim and Miss Anne Pilgrim. And you do? Pilgrim. Sarah and Anne Pilgrim. So sure, we've met before. The name rings a bell. Does it? Would you mind if we went up to our rooms now? Observatory at the foot of the mountain. The cable car. There's the small hut the climbers use. You can see it from the observatory. It's all there. Just like. Just like what, Anne? Well, just like. Sarah, why did I want to come here? What is there about this place? Why do I feel I've seen it all before? Don't worry about it, darling. Lots of people get a feeling like that. Perhaps you read about it in a book, or saw a picture in a travel folder. You mustn't let it upset you. No, I mustn't. Yes, you're right. I've probably read about it. Come in. Hi. How are you? Give you a hand. Oh, I think I can manage. Lovely spot, this, isn't it? Certainly is. You've been here before, haven't you? Yes, once, a couple of years ago. 
Good climbing. So they tell me. Don't you climb? Not if I can help it. Funny place to come for a holiday. If you don't climb. Yes, isn't it? Attractive, those two girls, aren't they? Certainly are. Pilgrim sisters. Sarah and Anne. Of course I knew I'd seen them before somewhere. On the Palladium about a month ago. They're a mind-reading act. <laughs> Funny they didn't say anything. Well, perhaps they, uh, they wanted some privacy. Can I buy you a drink later? All right. Good. Give me Xerox 6468, will you? Yes, I, I want you to check on someone for me. Brooks. Alan Brooks. He's just arrived here. He he's American. He's about 40, I should think. Well, I should try New York first, and then Los Angeles, and then Washington. OK. Right. Hello there. You'll be Brooks. That's right. I'm Dewhurst. This is Brett. How do you do? How do you do? Looks like you're going for a climb. Yes, we're going up the Trollenberg. Gonna have a noggin before we start. Care to join us? All right. What's it going to be? Scotch, please. Scotch and a few brandies. <coughs> Better give me a bottle of brandy to take with us. Keep the cold out tonight. You, uh, you're gonna stay the night? No, there's a hut at the foot of the South Cull. We'll sleep there tonight and attack the mountain proper tomorrow. Hello, Truscott. You must be Miss Pilgrim. Yes, that's right. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Durst, sir. And Mr. Brett. Brett, yes. How do you do? Do you care for a drink? I appear to be in the chair. Wishes bon voyage. Thank you. I'll have a Campari. Truscott? Uh, scotch, please. Campari and another scotch, hands, please. Sit down, sir. Her sister's here with you, isn't she? Klein told us. Yes. Would she care to join us? Perhaps oh, we can... No, she's having a rest just now. Quite an occasion for me. My first time up a mountain. Oh, yours too, Mr. Brett? Oh, no. He's a big noise in the Alpine Club. How did you come to take up mountaineering? I want to see if we can't find some good reason for all these accidents. I'm a geologist. I know all about rock formation and that sort of thing. Well, here we are. Cheers. Good luck. To a good climb. Keep an eye on your roping, won't you? Why roping, particularly? In the student business last week. That's right. Nasty business. Very nasty. What was that? Some kids climbing on the South Coal, and one of them fell. They shouldn't have been climbing without a guide. Seems he wasn't roped up correctly, and the rope got caught up around his neck. Strangle him? Worse than that. Tore his head off. You don't know the half of it. Tell them what the villagers say, Hans. It's not for me to. What do they say, Hans? Well, the guides who found him, also his friends. This where the rope was round his waist. You understand? It was still tied. Oh, but how could it have? Uh... The villagers have something to say about that too. Haven't they, Hans? Excuse me. What do the villagers say, Trescu? They say that it happened before he fell. As I said, they shouldn't allow inexperienced climbers up the Trollenberg without a guide. There are bound to be accidents. Nevertheless, you watch your ruby. We ought to be moving. You want to make the hut before nightfall? Well, yes. Oh, uh, I'm going up to the observatory. I'll hitch a ride with you in the cable car. That is, unless you're going to climb the whole way. Climb the whole way? Well, if I can help it. <laughs> See, there are certain chemical changes that can take place inside rock, which cause a physical alteration to its structure. At times, it can become like chalk, break away in your hand. What do you think of that, Brett? Hmm? Oh, I don't think it's like that. 
A mountain's a mountain. Some people can climb it and some can't. Those that can't shouldn't try. I'm here under sufferance. <laughs> How long do you think it'll take you to reach the hut from the observatory? I don't know. Oh, about three and a half hours. It's an easy climb. Professor? Professor? How many more times do I tell you I am not to be interrupted? I'm sorry, sir, but there's someone outside to see you. I don't care. Tell him to go away. He says his name is Brooks. Tell him to... Ellen Brooks? Yes, sir. Well, bring him in! Bring him in! No, wait, wait. I bring him in myself. <laughs> Alan, my dear Alan. <laughs> they all get a sack for leaving you out here. Oh, come in, come in. Oh, it's good of you to come and see me. And on your holidays, too. I was lucky I was in Europe. Huh? You got my letter? Yes. Well, you don't say very much. What's the matter? You're not pleased to see your old friend? The gate, sir, Professor. And how are you, Alan? <laughs> come in, come in. <laughs> well, Alan, what do you think of our little observatory? Huh? Yes, indeed. You know, the government gives me as much money as I want. <laughs> oh, come here. I'll show you something. A television? Better than windows. So look. Hmm. You see? Television cameras on the roof. We watch everywhere. <laughs> you know, the government, the government, they say to me, Professor, do you have to have such expensive things? Windows are much cheaper. <laughs> and I say, I have to have, and I have. <laughs> uh, that over there, that is the only window. And even for that, we have protection. Look. That will stand up to any avalanche. <laughs> but that too was very expensive. <laughs> All this to study cosmic rays. Huh? Well, Alan, come into my office. Huh? Well, Alan, here we are. <laughs> Same old mess, huh? <laughs> well, you're looking very fit. Fit? Oh, I look the same as always. Come on, quit your stalling, Professor. You forget I know you. You said in your letter that it was urgent. I see you right away. What's so urgent? Well, how long have you been here in Trollenberg, huh? Got here this morning. Came right up to see you. You haven't heard about the accidents, then? Yes, I, I heard about the students. Yeah, that was one of them. But, but there have been others. Many others. Where people climb mountains, there are lots of accidents. That's true. And sometimes the bodies, they disappear. But here, the search parties go out and always they find nothing. Now, why is that? I don't know. And then there is the cloud. What cloud? Oh, come on, Alan, you know what I'm talking about. The cloud where there should be no cloud. Where there are mountains, there are always clouds. But this one remains static. On the side of the Trollenberg, it never moves. Freak of nature. A radioactive freak of nature? Radioactive? Mm -hmm. Can we see it from here? Come, I'll show you. There you are, on the south side of the Trollenberg. Come here. You see, here, here's a map of the area. This is the Trollenberg. Now that, that is the scanner. It's up on the roof here. Now you see at the moment, nothing. No reaction, nothing. Now remember, here is the cloud. I turn on the scanner. So, now watch when it passes the cloud. Watch up here on the dials. 
Uh-huh. Now you see it's past the cloud, nothing. Watch it go around again. Watch here. Well, what do you think of that? Now, Alan, I ask you to think back three years ago to what happened in the Andes. But, but this can't be the same. Why not? We have the accidents like before, we have the cloud like before. Why can't it be the same? Too many things missing. The, the mental compulsion. What is it? Girl on the train. She, she suddenly decided she had to get off at Trollenberg. She was booked for Geneva. But she had to get off at Trollenberg. And did she? Yes. She's at the hotel. There's climbers on the Trollenberg, sir. Climbers? I thought they were all scared away. Where are they? 16 degrees west of due north. Two thousand meters. Hmm? Oh, it's Brett and Dewhurst. You know them? Well, just from the hotel. They came up with me on the cable car. Mm. Well, they should be all right, as long as they stick to the present track. The cloud is well to the west of the path. Mm. Aaron, will you do something about what I've told you? In the cloud? Mm. Do what? Inform the authorities. Look, I'm on a holiday. Besides, you haven't told me anything that can be proved. I've told you about the cloud. I've told you about the accidents. What more do you want? Facts, proof. Something that'll look real in black and white on the committee's desk. I don't know. I'm not going to stick my neck out again like I did in the Andes. But why? You were employed by the United Nations. It was all in the report. Look, by the time the Andes report was in, there wasn't anything left in the area, explained or otherwise. They practically accused me of dreaming the whole thing up. Well, if I was to take a hand here, I'd have to have a list of documented facts, and they'd have to be pretty conclusive. You're an important man. Why don't you get through to burn? Important? I'm only important if I say something about cosmic rays. If I say anything else, they tell me to mind my own business. Maybe, maybe you should speak to Klein. Hotel proprietor? Well, he's also the mayor of Trollenberg. Perhaps he could help. Anyway, he could supply a list of the accidents. Then perhaps you do something yourself. You can't relax like that. Hello? Yes, sir, Brett. You arrived all right. Good. Good. A night's sleep will set you right. Yes, all right. Goodbye. It was her bread. They have arrived at the hut. You see, there's nothing to worry about. It is just unfortunate that this year we have had many inexperienced climbers. And what about the rumors in the village? Well, you know these people, Professor. They are superstitious. They like to believe in, uh, in fairy stories. Gentlemen, you understand. Officially, there's nothing I can do. We should be able to make the summit and back tomorrow, if we travel light. I must have a sack for rock samples. Uh, I think we can manage that. You can take your sack. Hmm. 
possibility's not too good. A little clear. Fog up here. Now, cloud. Moving down from the peak. Will this do, Miss Pilgrim? Unlikely oh, this will be fine. Variety, <laughs> it's quite a collection you have there. <laughs> now, would somebody bring Anne in, please? Oh, yes. <clears throat> now, you'll see that I make no signals to Anne and say nothing, <clears throat> so it's impossible for any sort of code to be used. It's a banknote, French, 500 francs. There's a number on it. H O one. One, eight, eight. Very good. And who does it belong to, young lady? Philip. <laughs> it's a rounded sort of object about the size of a tennis ball. Made of glass. I think it's used as a paperweight. There's a model inside it. A mountain and a little hut. And when you shake it, there's a snowstorm. Snow. Mountains. Little hut. Two men in the hut. Anne. Leave the fat one, he's Watch. asleep. Yes, the fat one, he's asleep. But he's not the one. It's the other one. Sitting at a table. Smoking. Writing in a book. He's the one. He's getting up. Coming towards the door. He's reached the door. He's opening it. He's coming out. Up the slope. Up the slope. Walking slowly. No. Paperweight. Stone Stone Please, don't crowd. Get up to their room. Up. There. Hello? Hello, Brett. Dewhurst here. What do you want? Are you all right? Yes, why? Is Brett there? Of course he is. You're wandering off in the middle of the night. Just a minute, hold on. Durst! Durst, is Brett there? Can you hear me? Durst, are you there? Hello, hello! Hello? You're right. He's not here. He must have just gone out. I'd better go and look for him. No, don't do that. You'll be lost in five seconds. Just sit tight where you are. I think I should go. Maybe something wrong. No, you're not to move. Stay in the hut. What's the weather like? Not very good. Some heavy cloud coming down. Well, then stay where you are. There'll be somebody at this end of the phone all night. If Brett shows up or if you need us, bring us here, will you? All right. Bye. Bye.
looking around, I think. Well, I don't know what happened. It's all right, darling. You passed out. <sighs> well, we need something to relax your sister. Sedative, perhaps. You have such a thing? I may have some sleeping pills in my room. Shall I see if I can find them? Oh, please. Thank you. Sarah, could I speak with you for a minute, please? All right. I shan't be a minute. No, Miss Sarah, I don't want you to upset yourself. Are these any good? Oh. Yes, that's fine. You give her two of these, then come downstairs, please, huh? All right. So Mr. Brett decides to take a walk. That is not so strange. Hope you're right. How is she? Well, she'll be all right, I think. Did you get through to the hut? Yes. Mr. Brett isn't there. Did you notice how she said he was coming out of the hut, coming up the mountainside? It was as though she was watching from on the Trollenberg itself. Uh, Miss Sarah, I wanted to ask you something. Um, this act of yours, you've been doing it for how long? About two years now. You don't use a code, do you? Well, we used to. And then we found that Anne could guess what I was thinking before I started speaking. But I don't see what this has got to do oh, please, with... Please, please. Your sister's telepathic, no? Yes, she is. I wanted to give up the act. Why? Well, you saw what happened tonight. It's a dreadful mental strain. That's really why we're taking this holiday. Nevertheless, you will take her away from here first thing tomorrow, please. Take her away? But why? It's not good for her here. You will take her away first thing in the morning, all right? If you say so. Good. Hello? Yes? Yes, he's here. It's for you, Professor. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Cravet here. Professor, I thought I'd better contact you. That cloud has started moving. Yes, its variation is about six degrees. Radioactivity increasing. Radioactivity is increasing too, sir. Wait a minute, I'll find out. Yes. Yes, I understand. Now, I'll be up in the morning. The cloud has moved. It is at the foot of the South Col, where the hut is. Hello. Oh, hello, Alan. Oh, no sign of him yet. There's plenty of hell outside anywhere. I can't see far. Perishing cold, too. Yes. Yes. Hold on a minute. There's someone outside. Hang on. Is that you? False alarm, I guess. Hang on a minute, I'm just going to close the door. Speaking. Yes. 
I see. All right. All right. It was the observatory. The cloud has moved away from the hut. Back up to Trollenberg. Is das Gepäck in Ordnung? Jawohl. Habt ihr gut nachgeschaut? Ja. We better start now. It will be light soon. Ah, right. Yeah. I thought the locals were afraid of going up that mountain. They are afraid. There's an unwritten law here. Time like this, they, they go up no matter what. I have called a spotter plane, but it will not be up till morning. We will be well on our way by then. Ready? All right, Herr Klein. Good. Look after yourself, Alan. Don't worry. I'll stop by the observatory on the way down. Good. Be careful, everybody. Radio receiver. You see, your sister's mind is capable of receiving signals sent out by other minds, by yours, for example. But now, well, now there is a stronger signal, I think, a stronger mind. It's jamming the wavelength. But who is it? Well, well we shall know more about that, I think, when they reach the hut. In the meantime, I say to you again, get your sister out of here before it is too late. Too late for what? Well, it's time I was getting back to the observatory. Too late for what, Professor? When they reach the hut, then we will know for sure, I think. It's locked from the inside. There must be in there. Mr. Pratt! Mr. Dewhurst! Just locked in through the window. The place seems deserted. and stiff. Where are they? That door was barred on the inside. Yeah. Hey, Brooks! Why not? Look after last night. I just surely. want to stay here, that's all. Now, Anne, I really mean this. We're leaving Trollenberg today. All right? All right. Now, don't you worry about anything at all. Now, I'll go and fix things up.
You know these mountains here, Klein. What do you think our chances of finding him? Herr Brett is an experienced climber, so we can only assume he's hurt. They all have their third orders and a spotter plane should be here any minute. No, Mr. Curtis. Hey, Alan. This is where the telephone went dead. The wires are broken. What do you make of it? Never seen that happen before. I have. I saw some experiments with excessive cold once. Wire like this is subjected to sufficient cold it crystallizes. The structure breaks up. Just like but this it, hair. It hasn't been cold. Not cold enough for this. Yeah, I know it. Plane to party. Plane to party. Are you receiving me? Are you receiving me? Party to plane receiving you loud and clear. What is your position? What is your position? Our position, map reference, 265843. Over. Roger, party. I can see you now. I shall fly north for five miles, then turn west for five miles, then south. Uh -huh. I shall cover this search area first. Mm -hmm. Roger, plane. Alan, I... The observatory. Professor Crevet. Hello, party. This is the plane. I've spotted him. I've spotted him. He's approximately half a mile due north of your position, above the north face. Roger, plane. My name's Wilde. Professor Krevitz sent me to bring you to the observatory. But I'm not to go to the observatory. Well, there's nowhere else to go up here. And it's only a couple of hundred yards. I'm to go up the mountain. I don't think so, Miss Pilgrim. I think you ought to wait a while at the observatory. The 
ist sein Rucksack, aber ich kann ihn nicht sehen. the other circuit. But wait. Switch back to the first circuit and reverse the scanner. No. Well, hello, Anne. What are you doing up here? I must go. Please excuse me. Uh, go? Go where? The Trollenberg, I must go now. Don't let her go, sir. Don't worry. Come along. Oh, good. Helen, I want to speak with you. Yeah, I got news for you, too. Hans, when's the next cable car go down the mountain? It shouldn't be long, sir. Good. I, I want you to take Anne down. Don't let her out of your sight. Anne, I, I want you to go with Hans. He'll take care of you. Thank you, Hans. Well, I've been to the hut. And? Dorst is dead. Brett's missing. <sighs> Not that I'm surprised, mind you. The cloud has started moving again. What cloud? Oh, I don't think you'd understand, Philip. Like that time in the Andes, do you mean? How do you know about that? All right. I'm a newspaper man. It's my job to know about these things. I see. I chased that story when we got a wind of your report, Alan. When I got there, it was too late. Looks as if I'm going to be more fortunate this time, doesn't it? Yeah, fine, fine. That's... That's just what we need. Haven't answered my question, Professor. What question? Is this the same as it was then? Seems to be. So what happens now? The United Nations have a special team for investigating phenomena. I call them in. Does the theory that you put forward last time still hold, Professor? What theory? Visitors from outer space, that was it, wasn't it? Well, what else? Well, what are they? What do they want? Look, Philip, there are many galaxies besides ours. Now, who knows what is happening millions of miles out in space? Perhaps the world that these creatures inhabit is coming to an end. Perhaps they need to find somewhere else to live. Well, why pick on us? We don't know, it's just us. Maybe it's also on Mars, Venus, Jupiter, who can tell? you go along with us? Until somebody comes up with a better theory? Yes. Yes, I do. All right. All right, while we're theorizing, why, do you think, do they always happen to land on the tops of mountains? First the Andes and now the Trollenberg. Well, it's the atmosphere, I think. You see, it gets much thinner high up. Well, perhaps these creatures need that. The clouds would seem to indicate this, too. Creating their own atmosphere. 
Well, if they can only exist on the tops of mountains, they're hardly likely to inherit the earth, are they? You see, anyone can get used to anything in time. Now, these movements we have recorded here, each time, lower down the mountain. Acclimatization, perhaps. What next, Professor? The next move is up to you, Evan. You must inform the authorities. Have you seen the professor? He's in the office with Alan Brooks. They're telephoning Zurich. Any sign of Mr. Brett yet? Well, the plane spotted someone he thought was him, and two of the searchers went to meet him. The others are back. Oh, they saw nothing. Well, if it was Brett, they ought to be back by now. Hey, sister. She's in the room. Good. You think she's safe from our friends up there? Well, I don't think they'll try the same thing again. Trouble is, what will they try? Brett! You all right? A bit tired. Otherwise, all right. Where have you been? We've had search parties out for you. That was lost. Dewhurst came back all right. When did you see him last? Dewhurst? Yes. Last night I saw him. At the hut? Yes, at the hut. It's a bit hot in here. Pour me a drink, Klein. Have one on me. Let me help you. Sorry. Thank you. How's your sister, Miss Pilgrim? She's all right now. Where is she? She's in... Here. Have a cigarette. I'm afraid. Pretty scary up there on your own. Were you all on your own? After I lost you, Hurst. I'm sorry to be a nuisance, but may I... No blood. Yeah. That should take care of him until the morning, I think. Good. You and O team will be here tomorrow. Dr. Brecker can have a look at him. Do we tell the others what he was trying to do? I don't know. about you, but I could use a drink. Alan, what is all this about? Brett behaving like that, I mean. You read the Andes report? Don't you know? Do you mean to say something like this has happened before? Oh, well, that, that part of the report was hushed up. There was an old woman down there. She was clairvoyant. The villagers thought she was a witch. Actually, it was a case of more than ordinary sensory powers, and Cravette was able to hypnotize her. Uh, she was remarkably sensitive to outside suggestion, you, you know, mental suggestion. Under hypnosis, one can tell these things. 
Well, it was about the same time as we first observed the cloud. She started having these trances. It was as though some mental compulsion was working on her. She began seeing things. We planned a course of hypnosis to try and find out where these compulsions were coming from, but we never got started. There was a, a man. He went up the mountain. He was missing for 24 hours, and then he came down. His uh, coordinations were not quite right, just like Brett. First opportunity he got, he took a meat axe to the old woman. We got there about 10 minutes later. We were both dead. How did the man die? Correct. The man had been dead already 24 hours. I know. I know it's impossible, of course. But you see, there are certain changes which take place in the body after death. Now, they follow a pattern that cannot be altered. The man had been dead already 24 hours. There was no doubt. Well, I was unfortunately unable to perform the autopsy. The police took over. Are you trying to tell me that Brett is like that? That we've just been fighting a dead man? We believe that he was sent down that mountain by whatever's up there for the express purpose of killing Ann Pilgrim. They can't afford for Ann to be alive. She's a threat to their security. They tried to entice her up there. Now they've tried this. I think there's worked. So what do they try now? I don't know. Professor? I don't know either. But whatever it is, we won't have to wait long to find out.
Hmm? Look at this. What? Hans, bring the light closer. Now put it lower. Lower. Put it on the floor. You see the way the flesh reflects the light? It's almost as though it was crystallized. Like meat that's been deep frozen. I still don't understand how such a... <laughs> Alan, the observatory's just been on. That cloud's moving again. It's coming down the Tollenberg, toward the village. Hans, I told you you're wasting your time. That phone is dead. The wires have been cut. We've got to get up to the observatory. But we must... You heard what the professor said. That place is built like a fort. If we're going to have any direct contact with these things, at least we'll have some kind of a chance up there. It's insane. We should try to get out to the valley. The road is blocked. The cloud stretches right across it. And then... You better get moving, huh? Yes, yes, you, you go in the next cable car with the girls. You got everyone? You, you, everyone. There are 12 left. One car's already gone up, and the other one will be down in 10 minutes. Uh, who's that? Hans. All right, everybody, let's get up to the cable car as quickly as we can. We haven't got very much time. You got everything, Philip? Yep. You think what about Hans? He's driving through that cloud. Professor, are you sure we're doing the right thing coming up to your observatory? Right or wrong, I don't know. What I do know is, it's wrong to stay down in the village. Up there we stand some chance, at least. Professor, look. On the lower slopes, the cloud. It's moving faster. I hope they see it down there. The operator says it is five minutes now. Good. Alan. The cloud's moving pretty fast now. Please, folks, I'd like for you all to be ready to load in the car as soon as it gets down. We haven't got a second to spare. It's nearly at the hotel. If only we could see into that cloud, at least we'd know what we were dealing with. Yeah, well, we'll know soon enough. at the hotel. Yeah, well, as long as it stays there, we're all right. At least that cloud lets us see where it moves. Let's get aboard as quickly as possible, please. That's it. Hurry along. Uh, please, ma'am. Please. My kid! Boy, my kid! Of course, the child. Cloud starts to move this way before I get back. Take the car up. Do you understand? What about you? Do as you're told. Stay. Sie können gar nichts machen. Tell her that Mr. All right. Let's get in the 
old car. That's it. Close shave. Yeah, well, we're not through yet. Telephone wires at the hut. Yeah. This contraption operating extreme cold. We've worked the cable car at 30 below. Colder than that? It never gets colder than that. Out here, sir. It's shots are safe and they won't get in the way. Right, the radio's still working? Oh, we checked it about 15 minutes ago, sir. Oh, Alan, come here. Alan, we're in big trouble. What now? The cloud is splitting up. Splitting up? Trouble. There are four of them now, and all moving this way. How long before they get here? An hour, maybe. Well, we've got just an hour to decide what we're going to do. we we'll check that radio again. You're going to signal the authorities? To tell them what? What do you use against these things? High explosives? Bombs. Time the plane gets here, those things will be all over us. How do they drop their bombs then? So it's still working OK, sir? Good. You see that thing again. Oh. There's someone knocking at the outside door, have I? It's Hans from the hotel. I'll let him in. There are five of them now, and all moving. Make up our minds pretty soon, though. It'll be made up for us. Hans, what's the matter? What happened? The cloud. It was stretched across the road. I turned the car and came back. You all right? Yes, I'm all right. Thank you. It is so hot in here. Stay here with the others, Hans. You'll be all right soon. Thank you. Yeah, bleib mit Ihnen. I know it's a lot to ask, sir, but... I don't see any other way. Anne, where are you going? I'm just going to sit down in the office. All right. But how can Anne help? She doesn't know anything. We don't know for sure that she can, but, Sarah, we've got to try something. Obviously, she has some kind of contact with these things, whether she knows it or not. I thought perhaps with you controlling her thinking, we, well, we might be able to learn something about what we're dealing with. I suppose we could try. Professor, it's a thermometer on the south call. It's going down all the time. Gee, it's 45 below. It's still dropping. It's a cloud location, isn't it? There is a cloud there, yes. Wait a minute. 
Say, it's, it's cold they need. They live in cold. Remember the phone wires at the hut? And Brett complained of being hot after he was infected. Yes, and Hans, too. He complained of the heat. Supposing that... Hans, what about him? He arrived a few moments ago. Said he changed his mind about trying to escape. He complained of... Where is he? Out in the corridor. Where's Hans? He went inside a minute ago. He came in here. Oh, where can he... Anne! No, Tell, no! Wait, wait, my dear, please. She'll be all right, I think. Well, better take care of him. How thick are these walls? I don't know, two, three feet, maybe? Fireproof? Well, yes, they reinforce concrete against the avalanches. Good. Hugo, get on the radio. United Nations in Bern. I want to talk to Colonel Spellman. Now that Ann can't help us anymore, there's only one thing left. What's that? What I said before. Every time we've come up against these things, there's been this intense cold. Remember you said that Brett mm -hmm. looked like he'd been in the deep freeze. Heat. That's what we've got to use. I'm going to ask for a bombing raid. You said that was impossible. Fire bombs. That's our answer. Through to Bern, Mr. Brooks. Got any petrol? Yes. Fine. Get it. And all the jars and bottles you've got. Rag stuffed in there tight so the petrol won't leak. May I have your attention, please? I don't want anyone to leave this corridor unless I say so. Understood? In the meantime, get as many of these ready as you can and be careful of them. They're dangerous. And uh, I can tell you that help's on its way. Thank you. Alan. Yeah. How are we going to use these bombs of yours? You light the rags and throw them at those things in the cloud. Alan, come here quickly. Look at this. Cute little things, aren't they? Yeah. I'm going to throw a bomb at that one. You watch on the screen, see what happens. Would you all go up to the far end of the corridor, please? Except you, you come with me. I want you to slam this door behind me and wait for me to knock to come back in. If I don't knock, don't open it, right? All right. I saw it on the screen. Those things can really move. We've either got to get a direct hit or surround them with so much flame they can't get out. Hey, let me try one. All right. Swallow on the roof. 
Wolf. It's taken Philip. Again, that's for sure. It's the only way in or out of this observatory I've checked. No more bombs, then? Not these. Well, what do we do, then? I don't know. Nothing much we can do, but wait for that airplane. What are they doing now? Can't tell anymore. They block out the cameras, you see? Charlie Roger to observatory. Charlie Roger to observatory. Receiving you loud and clear. ETA in five minutes. Over. Mr. Brooks? Yeah? I'm through to the plane. He says ETA in about five minutes. Good. Tell him to make a straight run over the observatory and drop these bombs in the roof. I hope he knows what he's doing. Hello, Charlie Roger. Hello, Charlie Roger. Charlie Roger to observatory. No change? Tell him to bomb the cloud. Hello, Charlie Roger. Drop first stick across observatory and cloud, understand? Bomb the cloud as well. Over. We'll go observatory. Sounds crazy to me, bombing a cloud. Over. Do as you're told, over. Yes, sir, out. Stand by, everyone. The target is that cloud. I'm going in to take another look. All we can hope is these walls will stand the heat of those bombs. Well, we shall know soon enough.
wilder. Tell the villagers they can go down the mountain any time they'd like. Yes, sir. How about a breath of fresh air? I'd love a breath of fresh air. Come on. Well, sir, it doesn't look as though you'll have to worry about her any longer. No, it doesn't. Cigarette? Well, Alan, for the first time in weeks, the Swallenberg is free from cloud. Yes, and let's hope it stays that way. Mm -hmm.